In chemistry, you're often asked to find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for an atom. Many times you'll be asked to fill a table out like this, or given a test question based on this type of information in the table here. In this video, we'll look at the rules and the definitions that allow you to complete this table and answer these types of questions. Let's get started. The first rule is that the atomic number, that equals the number of protons. And we find the atomic number here on the periodic table. It's usually the number above the element symbol, and it'll be a whole number. So we can fill in a lot of things on the table just based off knowing the atomic number. So for sodium, Na, the atomic number is 11. So we have our sodium, atomic number 11. We can put 11 in here. And we just said that the atomic number equals the number of protons. We can put that there. That's kind of the definition of what sodium is. Sodium always has an atomic number of 11. It always has 11 protons. Let's fill some other information in now. 47, if our atomic number is 47, we'll have 47 protons. 18, we'll have 18 protons. And we can also work backwards. We look on the periodic table, we find atomic number 47. That turns out to be Ag, silver. We look up 18, that turns out to be argon. So we can fill a lot of the information out just knowing the atomic number. Let's take a closer look at what that atomic number and the number of protons really looks like. So here's our atom, X, that's where the nucleus would be in the center with the protons and neutrons and the electrons, they'd be in these orbitals around the nucleus. If we add a proton, we have an atomic number of one and that's hydrogen. All hydrogen atoms have one proton, atomic number one. As we add protons, we're changing what element we have. Protons, the atomic number, that defines the element. On to rule two. The number of protons equals the number of electrons for a neutral element. All the elements on the periodic table listed, they're neutral. If they weren't neutral, they'd have a plus or a minus sign. They'd be an ion. But everything on the periodic table, nothing written, that's neutral. So the number of protons equals the number of electrons. Let's fill that information in. We have 11 protons, 11 electrons. 47 protons, 47 electrons. We have 18 protons, so we have 18 electrons. So that's fairly straightforward as well. Just remember, if there's nothing written after it, like a plus or a minus, it's a neutral element, and the electrons and protons are equal. Rule three, the mass number equals the protons plus neutrons. So for sodium, if we have 11 protons, and 12 neutrons, 11 plus 12, that's 23. Here, for this row, we have eight neutrons and a mass number of 16. Something plus eight gives us 16. Eight plus eight, that'll give us 16. For silver, we have to think 47 plus something gives us 108. Turns out that 47 plus 61 is 108. When we come down to this third row, I see I've not filled a lot of information in. Number of protons is eight, so the atomic number is eight. It's gonna be a neutral element. It would have eight electrons, so we filled that in. And eight, if we look atomic number eight on the periodic table, it's oxygen. So we're almost done with filling this table in, except for one thing. For argon, we don't know the neutrons or the mass number, and we can't figure them out just by looking at it. If you run into this situation, what you do is you go back to the periodic table, let's look at argon, and we can see it has an average atomic mass of 39.95. We're gonna round that to a whole number. We're gonna round that to 40. So now we have a mass number, and we know the protons, we can figure out the neutrons. 18 plus something equals 40. 18 plus 22 equals 40. And with that, we've finished this table. We've completed the table with the protons, neutrons, electrons, and mass number for these elements. So pause and complete the table here for protons, neutrons, and electrons using these rules and these blocks from the periodic table to guide your work. So for carbon here, we have an atomic number of six. Protons should be six. And because it's neutral, we'll have six electrons. And we know that protons plus something will give us the mass number. Six plus six gives us the mass number. Atomic number 19, if we look that up on the periodic table, that's potassium. Atomic number, so 19 protons, 
19 electrons and 19 plus 20 will give us 39. Here we have six, so that's gonna be carbon. We'll have six protons, we'll have six electrons. So six plus eight, that should give us 14. So we have two versions of carbon here. We have carbon with six neutrons and with eight. That makes these isotopes of carbon. The last one for hydrogen, you don't have a lot of information. You know the atomic number is one and there's one proton, should be one electron, but we have that same problem. We don't know neutrons and mass number. So let's round this number to one. Now we know one proton plus zero neutrons gives us a mass number. So hydrogen's kind of special, it can have zero neutrons. There are isotopes of hydrogen that have one proton and one neutron, mass number of two. And there are even some isotopes that have one proton and two neutrons for a mass number of three. We call these isotopes. Different number of neutrons, same number of protons, so it's still hydrogen. To really understand isotopes, let's look at an example. Let's look at carbon. So carbon on the periodic table, that has atomic number six. We know it has six protons. So let's add six protons here. And protons are positive, so we do have a positive charge. So let's balance out those six protons for carbon so it's neutral. So we'll put six electrons, opposite charge of carbon. So we add those. And now it's a neutral element because the six protons we have six electrons, those negative charges balance out. It's a neutral atom right now. With these six protons together by themselves, it's going to be very unstable. They're gonna push against each other because they have positive charges, they'll repel. So we're gonna put some neutrons in here. When we look at the periodic table, that average atomic mass, it's really close to 12. So most of the carbon is gonna have a mass number of 12. So let's put our first isotope of carbon, carbon 12. So we'll put one two, three, four, five, six of these neutrons. So now we have six neutrons, six protons. Neutrons plus protons, that equals 12. That's the mass number for carbon. And it's really close to the number on the periodic table, that average atomic mass. That's because most carbon atoms, if you had a block of carbon, would have six protons and six neutrons. But with isotopes, and carbon has isotopes, some of the atoms, have more than six neutrons. Some of them have seven. So this is a different isotope. The protons, atomic number, electrons, that'll be the same. But with an isotope, we have one more neutron. And when we put that neutron in, nothing really changes. Just the number of neutrons and the mass number. Six protons, seven neutrons, that'll give us a mass number 13. We call this carbon-13 because protons plus neutrons give us a mass number of 13. It's an isotope of carbon. About 1% of carbon is this isotope here. Not really common, but if you had a block of carbon, you would have some atoms with seven neutrons. There's even a smaller amount of carbon with eight neutrons. So now we have eight plus six, that gives us a mass number of 14. This is called carbon-14. It's an isotope of carbon as well. So there are three main isotopes of carbon. You can't really tell looking at the periodic table how many isotopes there'll be, but you can tell because that average atomic mass, that's close to 12, most of them will be carbon 12 and will have only these six protons and six neutrons. So pause and complete this table for the number of protons, neutrons, electrons, and the mass number for calcium. These are the major isotopes of calcium. So you're gonna figure out each one. And remember the mass number this tells you the mass number right here. So these are the numbers that you should have gotten for the protons, neutrons, electrons, and mass number for calcium. If you got something different, there's a link in the description and a card with the full video on how to do this. This is Dr. B discussing how to find the protons, neutrons, electrons, and mass number for elements. Thanks for watching.